Hi, in this video we'll demonstrate how to deploy microservices to a Kubernetes cluster. Now, although the demo is calling for Docker as a runtime, we are going to use Cryo as a lighter weight replacement for the Docker runtime. So all of our containers will be running on the Cryo runtime instead. Now the application is a guestbook application composed of a PHP front end and a Redis back end. Now the Redis back end will be managed through two separate operators. One operator for the leader database while another uh, operator will be managing the follower or the read replica Redis instances. And then the front end, the PHP front end, will be managed by its own um, operator. So prior to deploying everything, let's examine their definition files. So let's start with Redis leader. So the Redis leader will be managed by a deployment operator. We will be running one single reader replica. And this leader will be running Redis 605, an image pulled straight from the Docker, uh, Docker Hub registry. Now, the database will be exposing port 6379 through a Redis leader service. Let's take a look at the followers. So the followers will be managed by another deployment operator. This time we will be running two replicas. The read replicas will be two. The container image is from the Google's container registry. And again, we are exposing port 6379 through a follower service this time. And then the front end. Again, the front end is managed by its own deployment operator. The front end will be uh, running in three replicas, three instances. We'll be running container image straight again from Google's uh, uh, container registry. And this time we'll be listening on container port 80. So this port 80 will be exposed via its own um, service, the front end service, and this service will be of type node port to allow access to the front end even from outside of the Kubernetes cluster. So let's deploy everything and let's start with the Redis leader, keep control apply minus f redis leader dot yaml. So both the deployment operator and the service have been created. Let's do the same thing for the follower. Again, the deployment operator and the service have been created. Let's do the same thing for the front end. And again, the deployment operator and the service for the front end have been created. So let's list resources. Cube control get deployments. I want to see pods. I want to see services and I want to see endpoints. And I will display everything in a wide format so that I can see the distribution of my pods across the nodes in the cluster. Okay, so at the top we see the deployments. Okay, so we have the three deployments. One is for the front end. Another one is for the followers. The other one is for the Redis leader. Okay, the leader running one pod, follower two pods, while the front end is running three pods. 
So if we look at the pods, the number of pods corresponds with the number of replicas that the uh, operators are managing. One leader, two followers, and then finally three front ends. Now we know that each has been exposed via a service. So the front end service is a node prototype service listening to traffic uh, from outside the cluster. Then we have the leader service exposing port 6379 and the follower service exposing the same port number 6379. And then finally the endpoints just confirm that all of my pods are ready for business. They're ready for traffic. The leader is only showing one endpoint that corresponds to one pod. The Redis follower shows two IP addresses, corresponds to two pods, two replicas. And then finally, the front end is showing three IP addresses. That means three pods. So let's test the guestbook. So this being a Minikube uh, cluster, I can take advantage of Minikube's uh, direct service exposure. So Minikube profile multi box service front end. And once I do this, the guestbook will open directly in my browser. And now I can test it out. So the first message would be hello. Okay. So the message was uh, first was sent to the Redis leader backend. And then through one of the follower backends, the, 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 the PHP application was able to retrieve the message and display it down below. Okay. Let's say message number two. Okay. So with message number two, the same thing happened. First, it was recorded by the leader Redis database. And then from one of the read replicas, from one of the followers, the front end was able to retrieve the message and display it down below. So what about another one? How about Kubernetes is awesome? Okay, so it's right here. So every single message that we have submitted um, was re recorded by the uh, leader, and then it was retrieved back from one of the read replicas. Now, right now we're just running three replicas for my uh, front end. But what if we want to run more than that? What if we want to run, uh, for example, five or 10 replicas instead? Then I would just scale up my application. I would scale up my front end. So keep control scale deployment. Uh, my deployment is called front end. And I'll say, give me um, from three, let's say 10 replicas. Okay. So my front end has been scaled. Now, what does this mean in terms of the pods, the number of pods and their distribution in the cluster? Well, let's see. So the front end deployment is now showing 10 replicas. And in fact, I do have 10 front end pods. And from their distribution, I can tell that, that they're evenly distributed between the multibox M2 and multibox M3 
worker nodes. Okay. And then to confirm, I can see that the endpoints at this time are 10. So I have three IP addresses plus another seven that cannot be shown. Okay. But if I go back to my guest book, it still works. No problems. So I can record message number four. And there it is. And then five is a new message. And so on. Right? So I can scale out my application. Um, if I need to, I can scale it back down. Um, its performance will not be impacted. So this concludes our demo. Um, we learned how to deploy a multi microservice, multi tier uh, application in Kubernetes. And then the last thing we may want to do once we are done with all of our development work and all of our testing is to destroy all of these resources to reclaim um, CPU and memory. So what we could do is run kube control delete hyphen F uh, Redis um, follower. Do the same thing with Redis leader. And then do the same same thing with the guestbook front end. So by deleting with the help of the YAML files that we have used to create objects, all resources will be reclaimed. So all deployments will be shut down and the services and all the pods and all the new replicas which we have created in the meantime. So for validation, I can list resources and I can see that I no longer have the Redis front end leader or follower um, resources. So thanks again for watching. I'll see everyone in the next video.